Welcome to Mary's Library and Book Spot. I'm Jane Miller, and our book is by Robert Morgan. The title, Then Sings My Soul. And the book tells the stories about our hymns. Because there are so many hymns, these Book Spot programs will be in a series of stories, four stories each time, and Brandon Glick, our music director, is going to furnish some music afterwards. And we want to thank him and Tom Winter, who makes these programs possible. Let's begin with one of our very, very earliest hymns, written in 820 A.D. And we do know the name of the author of the hymn, Bishop Theodolf. We still sing this hymn today, every Palm Sunday. We march around waving our palms, celebrating our Lord's triumphant entry into Jerusalem. All glory, laud, and honor. Now the story behind this grand and regal hymn begins with the son of Charlemagne. Yes, that's Charlemagne. His son, King Louis, was on his way to celebrate Palm Sunday in a little village church south of what is now Paris. Louis momentarily paused by a monastery, and from a window, an imprisoned bishop was singing a beautiful hymn that he had written. And King Louis was so moved by the hymn that he ordered that hymn to be sung every Palm Sunday throughout the realm. And he pardoned the bishop, Bishop Theodolf, who wrote this hymn, All Glory, Laud, and Honor. Our next hymn reflects the great heritage of Celtic culture, Be Thou My Vision. Way back in the 8th century, an unknown poet in Ireland wrote a poem asking God to be his vision, his wisdom, and his thought day and night. The poem survived for centuries, and in 1905, a scholar in Dublin, Ireland, Mary Bar Burns, translated the works into English. Then the words were set with rhyme and meter to an Irish folk song. This folk song is popular today with Celtic dancers. I've seen it on the television. And the hymn is, Be Thou Our Vision. The next hymn was written by Martin Luther in 1529, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. Luther was not only a great reformer, Bible translator, and theologian, but he was also a musician. He had been born in an area of Germany known for its music. And when the Protestant Reformation began, Luther was determined to restore worship and music to the German church. 
This famous hymn is based on Psalm 46 and reflects Luther's concern with Satan. The words, For still our ancient foe doth seek to work us woe. His craft and power are great and armed with cruel hate. But we can turn to a mighty fortress is our God. I close now with what may be the most widely used hymn in the world. We sing it or say it at every one of our services. Can you guess what it is? It is our doxology, written by Thomas Ken. He has been called England's first hymnist because up until 1674, only the psalms were sung in public worship services. There were hymns, but hymns were not sung in the public worship service. Now, Thomas Ken served as chaplain at Winchester College, and to encourage devotional habits in his students at Winchester, Thomas Ken wrote three hymns. And these three hymns were for morning, noon, and evening, and they had a common stanza. It is that common stanza that is our doxology. And in 1674, the hymns were sung in the Winchester Church Sunday service, and this was revolutionary because psalms only were sung in the church service. It is that common stanza from Thomas Ken's three hymns that we sing today. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Mm -hmm. 